Thank you, Father Andre, for speaking with us today. From 3rd March through 31 March, Russian soldiers from special units, which reportedly included Chechen fighters, occupied Bucha. And if you could speak louder, that would be great. Yes, please, I need to have you both speak louder. Okay. These same units proceeded to torture and butcher civilians in their beds, in their basements, in their gardens, and on the street. President Zelensky has described these war crimes as genocide. <clears throat> what did you personally see or witness on your way to church each day? In Bucha, every day there were shooting, there were explosions, and uh, people got used to explosions. But the most difficult thing was that every day, any time, you might have been killed. Mm -hmm. There was no logic at all in it. <clears throat> Did father see um, anyone executed? I personally didn't see um, because maybe at that time I would have been killed too. Я бачив людей, які лежали вбитими на вулицях, наслідки чув постріли, це я бачив. I saw the consequences. I saw the people which were killed and uh, uh, I heard the shooting, explosions. That's what I remember. From the church here. Я і в церкві був і пересувався по місту, тому що у нас нічого не працювало, ні світло, ні вода, ні газ, і потрібно було десь взяти дрова, десь потрібно було взяти воду, і приходилося виходити із дому. Both in the church and uh, while moving around the city, because uh, there was no electricity, no gas, no water, and it was necessary to find some wood, some water, and that's why uh, he had to go around, to move around the city. Mm -hmm. But he heard gunfire. Yes, he heard gunfire. And did he, did he, under, did he know at the time that people were being executed, or did he just think it was a military-related operation? When Russians came, uh, entered Bucha, there were no big combats, uh, military combats. Наші війська розуміли, що сили не рівні. Сюди зайшло біля 200 коробок техніки російської, танків, бронетранспортерів. Our Ukrainian army understood that the forces were not equal because more than, скільки там, 200, так? 
uh, about 200 um, groups of uh, uh, different equipment, techniques, tanks, uh, armored vehicles uh, came uh, into Bucha. Special forces. Special and military And forces. Chechen fighters. And Chechen fighters. In order to have less uh, losses among civilian people and uh, understanding that the forces were not uh, equal, our Ukrainian army left the city. Uh, thinking that it would be better not to have combat, to have uh, military activities inside of the town, to lessen the quality, the quantity of uh, uh, victims among civilian people, uh, to lessen the quantity of ruined uh, houses here. So, um, I'm sorry, the Ukrainian forces decided not to come in? I did not understand what... Um, could you repeat when, that? Uh, Russian army entered, yes, when the Russian army so entered. so many uh, soldiers and uh, equipment that right. uh, uh, our army understood it was impossible to right. have battle inside okay. Bucha. Okay. Uh, did Father... I read in an interview that Father gave uh, to another American reporter that his car was stopped and searched on his way to church each day. Is that correct? Not every day, but it happened. Mm -hmm. You see, it was uh, very dangerous to move by car every day, and uh, father uh, uh, used his car only on those days where it was a humanitarian corridor. He helped other civilians to get to administration building uh, only at the time of uh, announced uh, humanitarian corridors. He put on his car a piece of white cloth to, to show that uh, it's uh, not safe. So at that time, uh, and only at that time it was possible to move, to mm -hmm. drive a car, mm -hmm. and uh, he was searched by Russian soldiers. Right. Uh, on the other time, he uh, only walked. Right. I, I read in the article that at the beginning of March, Russian soldiers searched your car, but by the end of March, it was special forces you suspected. Is that correct? Uh, it's difficult to say because uh, father is far from military uh, things uh, person here, but there were rotations of Russian army soldiers, officers, and he can't say uh, what kind of uh, troops there were.
Тут були і кадирівці. Was he ever? Okay. 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 Was father ever threatened during a search? No one pointed a weapon. Okay. Uh, who was who was carrying the candles at night? Uh, father was carrying uh, candles at night. Candles. He had he had no light, uh, just candles at night and in darkness, right? Just candles which were not okay. lit. Okay. At any point, did Russian soldiers come into your church? Um, and threaten members of your community or you. So when they uh, tried to enter uh, the church, uh, it was empty. They uh, broke the window, tried to come from the upper uh, part of the church. Soldiers they, did. Soldier, uh, soldiers, soldiers did. Yes. Locked, yeah. uh, to the lower part, but uh, everything was locked and there were no people in the church. That's why they left. Okay, so soldiers did in March break into the church, but they found no one here. Is, is that correct? Okay, why didn't they come back? Okay. 
Будучи дуже багато снайперів було на високих будинках, які прострілювалися. Я не знаю, чим вони керувалися, але вони тут порозбивали багато вікон і пішли. Maybe because uh, they understood that they reached their aim, they reached what they wanted uh, by breaking all the windows and maybe they put their sniper on the uh, highest point of the church, maybe, because there were many snipers all over uh, And this was in early March? Okay, so it's po I just want to be clear. So it's possible that his church might have, may have had a sniper who assumed a position in the, the high, at the highest point, correct? Maybe, but you don't know. And this would have been in early March or February when the Russians first came and then left. It was in the middle of March or okay. at the end of March. Okay, right? okay. And you, and you never saw a sniper or any, uh, you didn't find any shells or casings? As you could see, uh, the upper uh, church, uh, it is possible to look into the window and to see that it is empty inside, okay. but okay. they were crawling uh, on it and uh, looking inside uh, and uh, maybe they saw that there is nothing to steal or right. something interesting and they returned. Okay, okay. Did anyone father during the terror, uh, those days of terror, uh, outside your parish community or inside your parish community, seek refuge here, to live here, to stay here? На початку обстрілів була ідея, щоб тут зробити бомбосховище в нижньому храмі. Але відмовилися того, що верхній храм дуже високий, якщо б було пряме попадання в купол, все б обрушилося і люди могли б загинути і від цього і від цієї ідеї відмовитися. First they had an idea to make a bomb shelter here in this place in the lower church, but as we saw that the uh, cathedral is very high and if uh, they bombed uh, the cathedral, uh, the people okay. would have been uh, killed and blocked here <laughs> and they refused right. to make a bomb shelter here. Okay. Following the Russian withdrawal on 31 March, the world was horrified to see images of an open trench too, next to this church with body bags piled inside. After the Russian troops came out on 31 March, there was a photo of the whole world was just in the pain that happened. There were photographs of these trenches where they were in the who dug the trench and how many dead were placed there? Похованням займалася місцева влада, бо перед місцевою владою постало питання, яке треба було вирішувати нагально, що робити з мертвими тілами. Спочатку окупації багато було вбито людей, вони лежали на вулицях, 
результаты людей в городе, которые не имеют полноценно работать. И нужно было что-то делать. 10 березня произошло похование. Это было локальные обсорги. Uh, who had to take care of dead bodies because uh, from the beginning of occupation many dead bodies were lying all over the streets and the morgue was uh, overcrowded, it was full and it was impossible uh, to put uh, all the dead bodies into the morgue. That's why local authorities uh, took permission to uh, make a mass grave here and uh, they gathered, uh, killed people uh, and put them here. Okay. Uh, more than 100 people. Uh, approximately 112 or 116. Mm -hmm. And so local people or the, the local authorities asked Father's permission to dig the trench and to put the dead here? Yes, the local authorities asked permission of Father Andrew to dig the uh, mass grave and to put the dead bodies mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. It is no secret that your church falls under the jurisdiction of the independent autocephalous Ukrainian Orthodox Church in Kyiv. Mm -hmm. Yet, it wasn't shelled or closed by Russian troops during the occupation. Can you tell us why your church wasn't targeted by or occupied by Russian troops as they have done to other Orthodox churches in Ukraine? But our church was shelled. Uh, you saw the... This church was shelled? Yes. Okay. There were, the windows I saw. Not on the windows. But, there was just a column. There was a uh, place where it was uh, okay. shelled. Okay. Okay. Your church was shelled. But it was never occupied by Russian troops. What for do they need an uh, empty uh, place, empty building? In one church in Ukraine, they used it to store ammunition. There are. Я не готовий сказати, вони тут були, вони сюди залізли в цю церкву. Очевидно, свої інтереси, те, що їх цікавило, вони дізналися. Тому я не готовий сказати, чому вони сюди не принесли військові запаси. I'm not ready to tell you why they didn't uh, sure. use this place for storing their ammunition. Uh, okay. Maybe they uh, came here, they looked around, they uh, thought uh, what to do, and, and they so left. Okay. okay. They left. Nobody knows. Okay. Uh, I wanted to show Father a photo. Has he? Did he ever hear of or see this man, Lieutenant Colonel Azabek Odmodbekov? Okay. Okay. In the Orthodox, in the Orthodox divine liturgy, the priest turns to the faithful and proclaims, Christ is in our midst. 
священник звертається до парафіян і каже, Христос посеред нас. During these 28 days of occupation in March of hell on earth, did you ever ask where Christ was? I felt that Christ is with me. Той, хто був під час окупації, під обстрілами, молився, тому що було страшно. Those who were under occupation, under shelling and constant shooting, people were praying because it was scary. От, люди переживали за свої сім'ї, за те, щоб не були зруйновані їхні будинки і вони не загинули. People worried about their families, about their houses not to be ruined, not to be killed. They were worrying constantly. І той, хто молився, я з багатьма людьми спілкувався, вони відчували присутність Божу. And those people who were praying, Father constantly communicated to those people who were praying, and they felt the presence of God near them. Did he ever communicate with someone who no longer communicated because they were one of the victims executed in the street or in their basement? Did he lose any parishioners? Дуже багатьох друзів, знайомих і парафіян я втратив. Дуже багатьох. I lost many friends and acquaintances and parish members. I lost them. Я можу навести приклад. I can give examples. How many parishioners did you lose? Скільки парафіян втратили? Мені важко сказати, важко підрахувати, тому що багато людей, що знаходяться без вісті. Uh, it is uh, difficult to calculate people because many uh, people are uh, no, we don't know where they are now. I had a young man who was singing in my choir. But uh, we lost communication, we lost contact with him approximately on the 7th or 8th of March. In the place where he lived, many houses were destroyed, ruined. But we couldn't find bodies of their family. There were four people in this family. We couldn't find bodies. Couldn't find them. Приблизно за кілометр від того місця, де він живе, знайшли приблизно 7-8 тіл, які були спали тижня-два назад. About two weeks ago, not far from the place where he lived, about seven or eight burned bodies were found. От по персу, який був у нього, чітка, Думаю, що ці здали аналізи ДНК і зараз чекаємо на результат, але тіло впізнати неможливо, тому що спалено. Ага, і це неможливо зрозуміти тіло, тому що тіло вирішено, але тіло вирішено, який був на його фінгері, його аунт вирішено, що це її невію, і вона дала її ДНК, і так... The investigation is going on. This is the young man who was singing in the choir. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
розумієш, що навряд чи він живий, от, і угу. можеш, нема місця могили, нема де помолитися за нього. And we hope to find his body. Uh, we hope that he is uh, alive, but uh, hardly he is alive after such a nice But it looks as though he isn't because he's on. Uh, but uh, we need to have place where to pray for his uh, okay. soul. Another, Another example, uh, my teacher from uh, seminar from Orthodox Academy now. Uh, he is teacher of uh, old Greek, ancient Greek language. Uh, he was killed and he was buried in this uh, mass grave. Uh, the builder uh, who constructed this uh, uh, church uh, he went to the balcony and he was killed by sniper and uh, we have many examples such examples we have dozens of such people whom I knew and I lost them may their memories be eternal um, Father, one last, actually two questions. In his Easter sermon, St. John Chrysostom states, that Christos was Christ, Christ is risen, and yet not one dead remains in the grave. But there are many new graves in Bucha, are there not? Are they not? Mm -hmm. So, how does he make sense of not one dead in the grave with many dead newly buried around him? We must understand that for us, as Christians, physical death is not scary. We appreciate life. But the true life is when a person is with God. It is possible to walk uh, around uh, and uh, to live, uh, but to be dead inside, inside the soul. A person is dead when uh, he is without God. No matter how healthy he is, no matter how long he lives, but he is dead inside. In grief, here in Bucha, in grief, do the survivors of those who died during these days of terror see comfort in that? Mm -hmm. Багато людей, які вижили в Бучі, вони навіть не знали і не підозрювали, що відбувається зовсім поруч з ними. Many people who lived in Bucha and survived, they even uh, couldn't uh, understand what was going on near their district, for example. Під час окупації вони не могли прогулюватися по місту. 
during occupation they were not allowed to walk around Bucha freely. Everybody was staying in their underground so during occupation people had sometimes a uh, chance to go out to walk around their house uh, uh, to stay and they couldn't even suspect what uh, horror was around them were they ordered was there a standing military order in bucha not to go outside of your home So uh, it was allowed uh, for people to uh, put a white cloth uh, on their uh, houses and uh, like uh, like prapori or something. A piece of cloth, a piece of white a piece cloth, of cloth, a white cloth on their houses, okay. and to put a white piece of white cloth on their hand or right. on their clothes uh, yes. to go out of okay. their houses. Okay. But uh, as we see, many people, yes. although they were wearing something yes. white on them, yes. they were killed. Yes. My last question to you, Father, is this. Do you believe the Russians with the Chechens and their special forces will return to Bucha? Чи ви вірите в те, що росіяни спецвійська і чеченці можуть ще повернутися до Бучі? Я сподіваюся, що цього не буде. I hope that they won't come back. And that is a hope. Let us hope. Давайте будемо сподіватися. Father, thank you for your time uh, today. We are most appreciative. Ми зараз ми вас час